This third metric conversation is presented by Aetna. We have, if we are lucky, about 30,000 days to play the game of life. How we play it will be determined by what we value. I'm Caroline Modaresi Tirani, and this conversation is presented by Aetna. The sacrifices made by the men and women serving in our military are vast. They risk their lives, leave their families, and engage in combat to defend our country. One of the most common side effects of their deployment is, understandably, post traumatic stress disorder. Well, to help our veterans cope when they return home, mindfulness and meditation have been used to heal the traumas of war. And, Krish and Krishna Penyala, president of the Mindful Nation Foundation, has devoted his career to helping veterans heal through meditation. And he joins me now along with veteran Cody Ray Heron. So thank you both so much for joining us today. Really great to have you. And Krishna, I'd start with you. Uh, when did your work with veterans begin? It, it all started when I uh, got to know Congressman Tim Ryan and read his book. Uh, and it, part of it was the communities in our country that really are in need of help. And the most urgent community happened to be veterans because of the traumas of true war. And what we had to figure out was if we, this was a real moral obligation for us to heal these veterans when they do come back, because the modern method or the current method, the biomedical method, is not really working to help them heal. So it really started with my in a contact with Congressman Tim Ryan, and we thought of something called a Veterans Corps that could bring these new scientifically evidence-based contemplative strategies to help heal the veterans from trauma. And yeah, and talk to me a little bit about the strategies. Uh, you know, is it a one-size-fits-all approach, uh, depending on which veteran kind of comes back from service, or is it more nuanced? So the first thing is, uh, as, a, as an organization, we came up with a strategy that what we needed to do was find good solution providers, not just come up with the theories and the concepts ourselves. So we partnered with the Center for Mind-Body Medicine in Washington, D.C., founded by Dr. Jim Gordon, who has tried these strategies all over the world for over 20 years in Kosovo, in Gaza, and so on. And so he and his team have developed a variety of techniques, much like a toolbox, so that it's not a one-size-fits-all, but they all have some self-care component, a reflective component, and so on, so that depending on what clicks for whom, that can be accepted and practiced. Mm. And you're Cody, obviously, as an Iraq War veteran yourself. Uh, why did you decide to get involved with mindfulness and, and with what Krishna is describing? Sure. I decided to be involved um, after I was approached for the mindful uh, training. And I'm in school now, WSU, learning about uh, chemistry for pre-med. And the kind of medicine that I envision uh, practicing in the future is based more on this holistic care instead of the current um, reliance on medication. I believe that a lot of it we can improve through meditation and um, we can take kind of control of our own health. Yeah, you know, obviously for you, I, I know that mindfulness is something you practice personally. So what, what does it do for you? I'm curious. It allows me to quietly reflect on, you know, and analyze how I'm feeling, uh, so different things that I'm reacting to. I can sit down, take a few minutes and think it over, mull it over and, and really help find some kind of way to uh, uh, correct my interpretation of that stimulus or just, you know, realize that I'm being stressed and calm myself down before it carries over into other parts of my life. So, you know, give us an example. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, as we said, you, you know, returning a Iraq war veteran uh, and, you know, the, what you must have seen, uh, we just, you know, can't even imagine. What does it do sort of for you now that you're back home uh, that, you know, really does sort of help you? Some of my um, methods that I like are the, the quiet reflection. Uh, a lot of times I'll sit out and... Um, nature, just kind of take a minute to take everything in. And then quietly, as I'm calming myself down to, uh, with my surroundings, I'll look inside and begin trying to calm down. Uh, that breathing meditation and the guided meditation have just been wonderful tools for me. And, you know, obviously, uh, Krishna, when you when you sort of hear this, I mean, is that that was the the point, of course. Uh, what what is the goal, particularly with veterans that return home that may have PTSD? 
So the real idea is too many of them are falling through the cracks of the system. And unfortunately, and they don't believe in medication. And I, I've talked to many of them. And one of the things is they fill out a form when they come back. And if they say they have some problems, then they get held back and they can't meet with their families. So many of them just check off saying they don't have any symptoms so that they can go to their families. And it was so refreshing when I talked to one of the veterans after this training. And he told me, you know, maybe I should not have checked nothing on that uh, form so that I could have gotten the right attention. So there's a whole host of issues and self-care is the key piece because the whole, our whole belief is un unless you can take good care of yourself and those around you, we can't really change the trajectory that we are on. And I wanted to just share a metaphor. We all see this all the time and we tune out as soon as they bring, you know, the flight attendants come in front. But really, it has a very important message, this oxygen mask. They always say, put it on yourself first before you can help others. Mm. So that's really what we're trying to do is shift the emphasis from drugs and surgery and then on alternative therapies to really starting with self-care and then have some professionally assisted self-healing in conjunction with drugs and surgery so that it's, we are not really doing A or B, we're really doing A, B, and C. Yeah, I mean, I think that's an excellent point. Uh, you know, uh, Cody, do you think that there is enough emphasis on self-care for veterans? No, I, I don't think there's enough emphasis on that. Um, you're almost, as a veteran, pointed out to saying that you can't deal with these issues yourself and you have to seek care with professionals, and they don't even give you the option of trying. Uh, a lot of the techniques that we were practicing in San Francisco, you know, as the week went on, we saw massive growth in personal uh, resiliency popping up and, and people able to take control of some of the issues they've been wrestling with. And that was just in a five-day uh, workshop. It was really exciting. So I think that um, that, that part of is, is missing, and I'm really glad to be a part of it now as we're trying to bring the focus on to self-care. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you do, obviously, with the more that people become aware with mindfulness meditation training, do you feel like there is some headway that there is some progress being made? You know, are people more aware of self-care now than perhaps they were uh, when you when you joined the forces? Absolutely. Um, I'm teaming up with the, the local VA and we're discussing different options for pilot programs because uh, it's a part of the component that they're missing for the care of the veterans with PTSD. And they're very excited about adding these kind of uh, techniques and methods to their current uh, regimen. Wow, Cody, that's a dream come true for both Congressman Tim Ryan and I, because the whole idea was to create some Petri dishes where we show successes and Cody is uh, right there. And these people have just been through five days. And after four months of practicing the techniques, they go back for advanced training. And after that, they get to be coached over a 12-week period how to seek out other veterans in their home communities and offer them. So they head out on search and rescue missions to find other veterans because the other veterans will trust them. They're one of them. It's their brothers and sisters so that these people will be coached how to help other veterans facing similar challenges. I think that's an excellent point. And, you know, Cody, uh, just sort of very quickly before we, we go, uh, you know, has, has it helped, uh, you know, being able to speak as a veteran to other veterans when you're talking about mindfulness? You know, do, do people sort of listen to you and, and perhaps become a little more uh, OK with the idea of mindfulness, which maybe they weren't at first? Yeah, it's actually... Um something I've been noticing a lot is I have a group of a couple hundred students here at WSU that are veterans. And as I've come back from the training and began speaking with them about the idea, uh, I notice a lot of heads are nodding as, you know, they really relate to this idea and, and they're, they're anxious to try it. So as soon as we can, uh, I'd like to begin small group uh, meetings and really start bringing it to our community. Absolutely. You know, and Krishna, obviously, with what you're doing, it's sort of the tip of the iceberg. Uh, you know, what are you hoping, what are you envisaging, uh, sort of a big end goal for this program? Well, the real idea is we think of ourselves playing the role of a string in a pearl necklace. There are so many pearls around, and they're not all being hooked together. So the role of a string is key in bringing them all together. And one distinction I wanted to make, we don't really push this or sell this as mindfulness at all. 
We empathize with the situation that the people are going through and feeling and bringing various strategies for them to heal themselves from the trauma. We really don't even talk about mindfulness as the focus. These, we give them an entree of op options to integrate to heal themselves. Well, Krishna and Cody, I want to thank you both so much for joining us today on HuffPost Live. It's been really great to have you. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. And guys, this conversation has been presented by Etna. Stick around. There's more HuffPost Live coming up next.